Last night was in fact the first night at Bingley. How, how did it go? Uh, very well. We found we enjoyed it very much and very, very good audience. Very warm. Do you find audiences outside London are, are different in any way to in the big city? No, it, it was different each night in London. There was mm, three really smashing nights for us and uh, three sort of more laid back. I don't know why that is, but it depends a lot, I think, on, on the average age of the audience. Sometimes they're a little older and younger, and sometimes it's a lot of teenagers, you know. So it's, it's, uh, I wouldn't say there is any difference, really, between in London or outside London, or in Europe, or in America, really. I wonder if I could take you back to the very early days of ABBA, uh, and whether you could tell me exactly how ABBA came together, because I gather you were sort of individual artists and, and came together as a collective unit. Yes, that's right. We uh, was uh, mainly on a social basis to start with. I mean, we met the girls. Bjorn and I, was, we've been friends since a uh, long way back, 15 years or so. We wrote some songs together and uh, we met the girls. And Bjorn and I was into doing an album, the two of us at the time, in Swedish. And they helped us with uh, some of the backing vocals and we thought it sounded nice. So we said, let's, it would be very natural for the four of us to make a record together which we did, and uh, that was in uh, late 71. And uh, since then we've just, you know, kept on doing uh, the music we want to record. And, uh, well, that's about it. It's not very much to say, really. Somebody told me a funny story about the, the name ABBA, A-B-B-A, -B -B -A, which was yeah. the copyright to that was owned by somebody else, I gather, at one stage. No, no, it's, uh, it is a herring factory. A marinated herring, uh, and um, we had to ask them when, when we decided to use the name ABBA if we could, if they would agree upon it. And they said, no problems as long as we stay out of uh, big troubles. <laughs> so you're a herring company? No, we're not. They are. <laughs> <laughs> right, it was 74 really with the Eurovision Song Contest and Waterloo that, that really did it for ABBA. I mean, uh, yes. how, how much of a break is that? Because it must be very difficult for, for a Swedish group to, to break into the rest of Europe and into the rest of the world. I mean, was that really a door opening for you with the success of, of the Eurovision? Uh, yeah, yeah, it sure was, because, um, I mean, to win the Eurovision is, might be, in a way, worthless if you don't have anything to follow it up with. And in our case, I mean, we, we entered it because we, as Bjorn and I, basically, look upon ourselves as songwriters and uh, well producers also but we, we uh, we've been participating in the Eurovision Song Contest for maybe four or five times writing songs for the Swedish part of it you know and uh, we've been very close a lot of times and it is an opportunity as a songwriter definitely if you write a song to 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 have it, have it spread out around the world and we had a good song as we felt we had more songs from the, the, the Waterloo album but, uh, and I guess we would have more songs that everybody else would find more suitable for the Eurovision Song Contest. But we said, let's take Waterloo, because we thought that was the best one, as we felt, even if it's not really a Eurovision song. So, um, and also the fact that, I mean, winning the thing in, in half, half, I don't know, half a billion viewers or whatever it is, watching, and uh, also knowing that we had the ability to follow it up with uh, other records, I'd say it was uh, really essential to make it so so quick as we did. You can't wish for a better launch than that. Really. No, not really. Everyone thinks automatically now of ABBA as being sort of instantly, you know, every time an ABBA record comes out, it's straight to the top and all that. But uh, but from Waterloo on, I mean, you had two singles out then, which were what Ring Ring and uh, I Do I Do I Do, which wouldn't, didn't really do that well for you. I mean, they, they uh, Ring Ring they, was they didn't do anything. There. That was the that was the Eurovision song that we participated with, participated with in uh, Sweden the year before in '73, where we were number two. So we didn't go to to the international to the uh, international part of it, but um, that's right, and especially in England because uh, I have a feeling that it's easy to get a, you know to be labelled if you're a Eurovision Song Contest winner. That's what you are, and that's a one shot, and that's it. So we can forget about that. That's happened many times, isn't it? I mean, did that worry you? The, the, the no, not really. You? No, we were we weren't really worried. Uh, it took it took a year after the Eurovision, so 
into 75 before we started in England again. I do, I do. It wasn't, uh, wasn't really a flop. I mean, maybe it was like number 15, so I don't know. From that moment onwards, it, it just went up to the heavens. And yeah, it's been working SOS pretty good. SOS one after that. SOS, yeah, and Mamma Mia. How difficult is it? I mean, it, 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 it's you and, and your partner really writing the songs. It's uh, um, pretty hard, yes. I mean, do you we find it difficult to sustain that? And once you've written all these songs, do you find it difficult to make your mind up which you should put out next, what you think is the, the right thing for the right market? Yeah. And, and do the girls always agree with you? The problem is not to, to pick a song, I say. The problem is to write it. Because you never know what you will, we don't know what we'll come up with, you know. It could be anything. It could be a Chiquitita or Does Your Mother Know. I mean, they're pretty, they're not very much alike, are they? I mean, and so we never know. So we, what we do is we sit down and we write and we record them. And then when we have a full album, it's, uh, we're very close, we're too close to it to really decide which one is, is, would be the best single right now. I mean, it's, so, um, that's not a problem for us, really. It's more, we ask people and see if they have the same opinion as we might have. And if they do, uh, that would then obviously be the single that we release. You obviously tour the world. I mean, you really do yeah. all over the place. Uh, how much of a strain is that on you? I mean, I, I think a lot of people go along to concerts. There'll be people here tonight seeing you on stage who don't realize that you're going to jet from one place to the other and you're going to stay in hotels and all the rest of the stuff. I mean, how much of a strain is that constantly, just moving from place to place to place? Well, we're not doing it constantly. We have... Um, we made only one major tour since uh, well, since 74, which was an end of 76 in, here in Europe, and that was for three weeks, and we had uh, two weeks in Australia, in the beginning of 77, and uh, that's it. The only tour we made, apart from this one, and we were spending like uh, three weeks in Europe and three and a half weeks in, in the United States. And that's all for the past five and a half years. It's not very much. Is that a conscious decision on your part to do that? Pardon? Is that a conscious decision to do that on yes, your part? Yes, definitely is. Yeah. Because it is, it is a strain to, to be out on the road too much, I'd say. And we don't, we don't want that. And we don't have the time to do it either because we need time to write and produce the records. And uh, besides, I mean, none of us really enjoy being on the road. I mean, the travels, the hotels and all that. Everybody enjoys being on stage naturally, but that's such a minor part of the time that you spend when you go out on a tour. Are you actually involved in, in any production with other people, or is it purely simply ABBA? Yeah, well it has been for the, for the past four years at least, only ABBA. I produced a record with a, with a Norwegian fellow, a friend of mine, uh, just a couple of months ago in uh, Norwegian just to do something else, you know, because I felt it was about time to sort of, well, just to, to do something else than only album, and just being a producer, not writer, only a producer. But otherwise we haven't done anything like that. Do you see that as something for the future, maybe? Yes, definitely, yes. How long do you see Abbott touring around? I mean, I, I know you said you're not doing that much touring, or you haven't done that much touring in the past. No. But how long do you see Abbott really as, as a collective unit uh, touring around, doing concert tours? Doing concert tours, I have no idea. I don't know, even know if we're going to make another tour after this week, but we haven't decided anything about it. We're going to Japan in March, but it's the same setup, same crew, same band. Then after that, we haven't decided really what to do. We're going to write and record a new album, of course. And uh, then we'll see. I was going to ask you, actually, do you, do you find it difficult to write in English? We obviously speak perfect English, but, but is, it, is it difficult for you to, to write in English, too? No, well, I'm, I'm more emphasizing the music part of it and Bjorn is, is, uh, is writing most if not all of the lyrics but we I mean it has we've been doing that for, for many years and it, it is really the only way I mean it would be an impossible situation for us singing in Swedish because nobody would listen but you've got a new album out at the moment so it's a new album it's actually Abba's greatest hits volume yeah. two yes um, if there was one particular track you wanted me to play off that which one would it be and would there be any special reason for it uh, a melody that you're particularly keen on or something? No, that's, there are many that I like very much, that I feel proud of when I hear them. 
but uh, it's hard to pick one, you know, because they're they're different. I feel it. I'm I like Thank You for the music very much, and I also like the ballad from the same uh, little concept thing that uh, I wonder. Talking about concepts and things, um, I was wondering really whether whether you see ABBA forever as a singles type operation, or, or whether you'd see yourself ever getting into to something of a, a concept nature albums wise in times yeah. to come. I never really understood what a concept album is, to be to be honest. I mean, if you, I have a feeling it's only a matter of of um, make believe, isn't it? Because I mean, if if you take uh, an album like, which I think is one of the, if not the best album ever made, like Sgt. Pepper with the Beatles, it's uh, looked upon as a concept album, which it is. I mean, they start off with the Sgt. Pepper band and they finish off with it before uh, a day in the life, which puts it all together, right? So they give it a frame. But if you listen to the music uh, on the album, it's still, I mean, what you have there is 10, 12 hit songs just happen to be on the same record. So I don't really know what that would be if it's not like like uh, an opera thing you know, or musical idea. So that would be a, a definite concept. Otherwise, we've done so far is just writing songs and trying to do it as good as we can and put it all together. Where are you most successful outside the UK? Oh boy, I don't know. It's about the same, I'd say. Uh, Scandinavia. Germany, Holland, Belgium, Australia, Japan, South, think, what, South America. What do they think of you in Sweden? Well, they enjoy what we're doing very much. I mean, you must be absolutely huge in your own countries. Uh, your own yes, countries we are. Too. We are, and they've they've known us for such a long time, you know, because I mean, we were all very well known before we formed ABBA as solo artists or as playing in, in uh, different groups. Bjorn and I did. So they've been familiar with with my face and Bjorn's face for at least, so it was in 63. And uh, the girls, I think they started about the same time, maybe 66, 67. So, I mean, they they know who we are. They followed up right the way they through. They treat us, but they're very friendly towards us. You, know. you still get chased around for autographs and everything in Sweden? Yes, but the Swedish people are very laid back. They don't bother you very much. They recognize us and they sort of say hello and smile, but they leave us alone which is uh, definitely an advantage to stay in a country like that. I wouldn't, uh, can't even imagine the situation, how it would be if we were French, for example, living in France. It would be very difficult. Yes, they, they tend to look after their artists all oh, the world. They, 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 <laughs> they chase them around yeah. all over the place. So it's three more concerts anyway on this tour. Yes. Uh, Bingley tonight and then Glasgow. Yes. And then off to Dublin. Yes. And you said you don't know whether I was going to tour again, but doubtless you will. No, well, apart from the, this March thing in, in, in Japan, I have no idea. We'll, we'll see about that. Certainly wish you well on this one. We look Thank forward you. to seeing you back in okay. the not-too-distant future, because I'm sure you will. Uh, yeah, you never know.